Uh, you seem to have uh, athetosis tonight as the smartest man alive. Athetosis. Can you define athetosis? A T H. E T O S I S. Right, but can you define it? What yeah, is of it? course I can define it. It is the athetosis is, uh, as opposed to Howard who has halitosis. A- athetosis is the constant involuntary movement of your fingers and toes, and uh, it can be in extreme cases your hands and your feet, Liz. Uh, so I think you know that I'm right too. Wow. See? Yep. I'm very shy, calm, and reserved tonight. I'm not arrogant. <laughs> Uh, Adam's in Saco, Maine. Adam, how are you? I got a question. Mike, I got yes. a question for you. You being the smartest man alive? Yes, of course. Well, me and my friends, were, we were just hanging around, and there's not much to do in Saco. It's not a really swinging city. Right. Well, That's... to make a long story short, I killed the cockroach. Are you, you what? I killed the cockroach. Oh. I, I cut his head off after I caught him, and, and he just oh. kept li- he kept living for an hour and 20 minutes, squirming around. Yeah. Is that normal? That, that, is what? Is that normal? It's very normal, as a matter of fact, uh, Adam. A, a, co- a cockroach has been known, there have been cockroaches known to live for up to two, three weeks after their heads have been cut off. Really? Yeah, it happens quite often. Did you know that, Norm? I didn't know that, no, Mike. Yeah. I, th- I figured a couple of days. Well, I've never had any, but I, I, I read it somewhere. Yeah. Uh-huh. They can live for quite a while without that. That tells you something about them. I got a tough question for you during the show. Yeah. Just one. Yeah. Whenever you're ready. All right. I'm not ready yet. Okay. During the 1967 World Series, at one time during the series, the Red Sox fielded an infield with the numbers one, one two, two, three, and four. four. Oh, you know. Uh, I know everything. All right. Norm Seaburn was the uh, first baseman. That's the Mike key. Andrews, Dalton Jones, uh, uh, and uh, Rico. P- and uh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Oh. Two, which one did I miss? You missed number one. Joe Foy. Right. Dalton Jones. Very Jones. good. Very good. Easy question. Very good. Yes, uh, Maury. I have a question for Norm. Okay. Whatever you think, Mike. Thank you for the call, Skinny. In Manchester, New Hampshire, Duncan. I'm here. Duncan. Do you think you think you're a smart guy, Mike? I know I am. Uh, I got a question for you. Go ahead. All right. How many kinds of barbed wire can you name, Mr. How, Smarty Pants? How many kinds of what? Barbed wire. I could probably name six. Go for K- it. Kinds of barbed wire? You mean varieties? You heard me. Kinds. There's lazy plate. There's a, there's a kind called Pooler Jones, which is uh, a little different from the, the other. Um, there's bar, uh, Barber Perfect Barbed Wire. Barber Perfect, as in, like, you get a good haircut. That's that's a third kind. I'm with think. you. Is Buckthorn? Yeah, Buckthorn is one. Yeah. Buckthorn? Yeah. What else do you want? I mean, uh... Um, uh, How about the, the Jane Hill barbed wire? Have yeah, you ever heard of that? I have. Yeah, Jane Hill. That's the kind they use it in her. prisons. And there's torn ribbon. Uh, untorn ribbon. I you're, think. you're incredible, Mike. You're incredible. I know. <laughs> oh, Underwood tack. That's another kind of barbed wire. I defy even a barbed wire expert to call me and... I mean, that's barbed wire, though. Not that I, but I had, to, I had to ransack my brain for that's that. That's incredible. Because if... I took a course on barbed wire back in uh, 1977. Hey, John. And, and off. John, that's, that's what I miss about Friday night. That's sounds right okay. sick. Wow. Wayne, uh, Wayne and Newton. Wayne Newton? Yeah, you got me. <laughs> Wayne and Newton, that's so great. Hey, Mike Adams. How are your tax problems? <laughs> Mike Adams, I heard you think you're the smartest guy in the world, huh? Think? Wayne, the smartest man alive knows. Mike, let me tell you something. I've been at MIT for about 40 years. I'm retired now. And 40 I years? You're a buffoon in this industry, Mike. In, you mean in the world's smartest demand industry? You're a buffoon in the industry, Mike. And I'm sick and tired of you making fun of all the good broadcasters out there by actually calling yourself a professional. Well, you know, uh, Wayne Newton, let me just tell you something, okay? I liked you better without your mustache, and uh, your best song was Donka Shane. Otherwise, cram it. All right, smart guy. Then tell me this. If I listen to the radio for an hour, how many words is that on the average? Like you sit, someone sits and counts the words that someone speaks on. That's right. Uh, let's That's say you, right. if you listen to Norm's show. Whatever show. Well, Norm's is a little slower. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, the average hour of radio, you mean talk radio, not music. Right. The average hour of talk radio usually has at least 11,000 spoken words. Damn it, damn it, damn it. <laughs> See? He knows I'm right, and he's pissed. <laughs> Sharon, eh. In, Sharon in Concord. I'm telling you, Norm, this is a great business. I, yeah. I should get one of those 1 800 lines where people, you know, like you call a psychic and tell it for four, four bucks a minute. You Don't can, you love those uh, infomercials?